Hi, I'm Weston Kuiper, Technical Director of the AT&T Performing Arts Center, and I'm here to lead today's Tech Talk, part of our Backstage Spotlight Arts Education Programming. Now, normally we like to bring students to the center, but we are putting these classes online so you can experience our technical training from the comfort of your home. Many of you have already watched our first video on scenic design, hosted by Bart McGeehan. In it, he spoke of utilizing our smaller spaces for our elevator projects and how those venues change the process and the design scenically. I wanted to add to that today by showcasing one of our very special venues, the D and Charles Wiley Theater. The D and Charles Wiley Theater is a multifaceted venue with many performance, rehearsal, and ancillary spaces located within its walls. However, it has a smaller footprint than that of the Winspear Opera House. And due to this, many of these ancillary spaces, such as dressing rooms, need to be located on a level above or below the main stage, unlike at the Winspear, where they surround the main stage. The Potter Rose is the main performance space within the Wiley Theater building, and it can do something very special. Proscenium is your typical theater setup, where the audience sits on one side and the stage is on the other, separated by the proscenium wall. Thrust is where the stage does not end at the proscenium wall and thrusts out into the audience, and now the audience sits on three sides of that piece of the stage. And flat floor is exactly what it sounds like. We create a flat floor from backstage wall to the opposing wall in the house, so that the room becomes one large open room. In order to change the space's configuration from flat floor to thrust or thrust to proscenium, we do something called a changeover. This is where the production team gets together and works a minimum of six to 10 hours converting the space and all of its parts. Now, to better get an idea of how that works, let me show you a little bit of a time-lapse video that was taken a while back of one of our changeovers. I wish our changeovers only lasted that long. These configurations allow many different performance groups to utilize this venue in a way that best fits their needs. And this is especially true when it comes to scenic design. Having multiple configurations allows scenic designers to really push the boundaries of their designs within this venue. Joining me now is Kevin Moriarty, Artistic Director of the Dallas Theater Center, one of our resident clients. DTC is one of those performance groups that utilizes the capabilities of this venue within their scenic designs. Hi, Kevin, and welcome to At Back at Home. Hey, Weston, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this conversation about theater design and theater space. Even though I'm uh, sheltering in place in my home because of the coronavirus, my heart is still in the Wiley Theater where all of us at Dallas Theater Center are so fortunate to be able to create innovative, surprising, bold theatrical productions all year long. So it's a real joy to be talking with you today. Kevin, thank you for joining us and it's great having you here. Let's jump right in. So how does the uh, ability to configure a venue in different ways affect the process and uh, the designs uh, scenically? The relationship of the theater space the scenic design and the relationship of the actor to the audience are all interconnected. In 
different plays, different um, relationships happen between the actor and the audience. For instance, in a Shakespeare play or in a musical, a character might look directly at the audience, see the audience there, and share their hopes or their dreams or their feelings with the audience. On the other hand, in a traditional realistic play, like say Raisin in the Sun, for instance, the audience is invisible and the actors, the characters are kind of living in their own realistic world inside a house, let's say, talking to each other, unaware they're being spied on by the audience. And in other productions, the audience is, the actors aren't just aware of the audience, but they're actually interacting with the audience. They can touch the audience or pull the up, audience up on the stage and actually get the audience involved in the show. So depending on what you want that relationship to be between the actor and the audience, the theater architecture can have a huge impact. A proscenium stage where you're looking straight at the stage, uh, kind of like it's a picture frame, is really perfect for a realistic show where the audience is invisible. A thrust stage is really perfect for a play where you want the actors to be able to talk directly to the audience, to sing to them, to share their hopes and their dreams and what they're thinking, and yet also be able to work with each other the characters to talk to each other about um, the plot or, or, or the dialogue. And then for me, most excitingly of all, is when you simply say that the actors and the audience are all in the same world. The audience is not invisible. They're a part of the play. They can influence the play. They can physically get involved in the play and they can participate in the play. To do that most effectively uh, with theater space, I find that um, having um, a non-traditional space, making the floor flat and building an entire scenic environment in the room is the best way to do that. What are some of the shows that DTC has done uh, that have really utilized the ability and pushed the boundaries scenically? Since we opened the Wiley Theater, we've used the theater in almost every imaginable space configuration. We've used it in very traditional proscenium ways. For instance, with our recent production of American Mariachi, we used a proscenium stage and we were able to create really specific visual images for the audience to look at. In our production of In the Heights, we were able to use a thrust stage so that the singing and the dancing and the community of the Washington Heights neighborhood in the musical spilled right out with the audience circling around it. In more um, kind of out there innovative ways, um, with our production of Colossal, which was a play that um, took place in the world of football. We um, removed all of the seating towers, flattened out the floor, filled the entire theater space with AstroTurf, put um, uh, uh, football uh, seating uh, bleachers into the space for the audience to sit on and brought in a drum line to uh, march around and play while football players did full contact um, with each other. In our production of um, Hair, we, um, eliminate, we eliminated all of the standard architecture and made no distinction between the, the theater stage and the audience. They were all one space. We divided the theater space into neighborhoods. There was a garden section where audience members were sitting on lawn chairs. We had a section of the theater that we created called the playground. Audiences who sat there could choose to slide down a big massive slide and they were sitting on um, fun, uh, childlike uh, playground furniture. There was another section of the theater that we called the kitchen, where there was all kinds of uh, kitchen furniture. And the actors would move throughout these different neighborhoods in the theater, singing and dancing. The audience got up onto the uh, into the space and sang and danced with the actors. The audience even had a chance to say dialogue. That's an example where we were able to obliterate completely remove any standard sense of theater architecture and just fill the space up as one massive playground for hippies. What were some of the biggest challenges in terms of scenic design as it relates to the configuration of the space? There are a lot of challenges with using a non-traditional theater space in a variety of unique ways. They range from really practical things like you have to have enough 
um, uh, space for um, wheelchairs to come into the theater. You need wide enough aisles for people to be able to get to a door in the event of an emergency. All the things that are just built into permanent theater architecture, but you have to create show by show when you're doing a unique theatrical um, space. But on the creative end, it's um, the questions that you ask are um, not only what the relationship of the actor is to the audience, but also what the relationship is of the audience to each other and the audience to the space. For instance, we did a production of Twelfth Night a year ago where when the audience came in, we wanted there to be a storm going on. We wanted it to get during, while the audience was coming in and sitting down, we wanted it to get darker and darker, cloudier. We wanted it to start to rain. We wanted winds to blow and we wanted to get the sense as it got closer and closer to the start of the show that the audience was in the midst of the storm. So we um, built a beach on the stage. We put the audience in in, um, in beach uh, chairs, you know, uh, lawn furniture, things like that. And then we thought, oh, but that space still seemed like a theater space until we figured out that we needed the ushers who normally would just be in usher clothing. We needed them to be part of the storm as well. So all the ushers ended up putting on rain ponchos and um, uh, were um, protected against the rain. So as they were, as people came into the theater, they were greeted by ushers who were also part of the play. Um, same thing is true in a musical. If you're you, if you're making the whole theater space be one set part of the world, then the band, for instance, can't just be in an orchestra pit, can't be invisible. They have to be characters in the play. They have to be in costume. They have to be part of that whole world. So you're not just thinking about the actors, the set, the costumes. You're also thinking about the fire exits, the ushers, and even how the audience um, looks at and uh, connects with each other. What was your favorite use of the space during your time thus far at DTC? There are there are so many uh, ways we've used the space at the Wiley Theater that has been incredibly creatively fulfilling and joyful for me. Maybe my personal favorite was a production of The Wiz that we did um, about 10 years ago in collaboration with Dallas Black Dance. So the um, in The Wiz, we, uh, it looked like when you came in the theater that you were in a normal configuration. You were looking straight ahead at the stage and Dorothy and Ann M were out there and a tornado was coming. And uh, when the tornado started, the tornado was brought to life by the dancers in the Dallas Black Dance uh, Company. And as they started dancing um, as if they were a tornado, they grabbed the sides of the seating banks that the audience was sitting in, which were on casters, these really expensive, um, heavy wheels. And so as they started dancing, the audience started to move. They started to slowly rotate. Their, the chairs they were on, the floor they were on, started to rotate. And every time Dorothy went to a different place in Oz to meet the Scarecrow or to meet the Tin Man or to meet the Lion, the audience would move to a new place in the theater. So for part of the play, the audience was looking straight ahead. For another part, the audience was in kind of a U shape. And then at one part, the audience was fully in the round. The audience kept moving in their seats at different points throughout the production until the very, very, very end when Dorothy sang her last uh, note of the song, Home, when she got back home to Kansas, at which point all of the seating returned back to where the audience had begun. So in that show, the audience literally physically went on a journey with Dorothy um, and experienced the wonders that she was experiencing in Oz. That's kind of, um, awesome, super fun, and not something that I've ever seen in a theater space before. Do you have any tips for young designers when working in a, a standard configuration as opposed to a venue that can be adjusted in this way? When young designers ask me about the unique challenges for designing in a versatile, non-traditional theater space, my suggestion is usually to First of all, start by asking yourself, what's the relationship of the actor to the audience? Can they see each other? What space are they in? Secondly, think about designing the entire room from all angles. 
usually when you're designing a set, you're thinking about looking straight ahead. And it's very hard for some designers to not think about looking straight ahead, but instead start thinking about a room. If you think about it, like if you were designing your living room or your kitchen at home, it wouldn't just be from one perspective. It would be what the experience is like sitting in different seats in the living room, not just watching the TV, but also maybe sitting at another chair next to the TV and, and thinking about what all of the walls and windows look like, not just uh, one wall or one window. The other thing that I would suggest is to be really big and bold. Make one big, bold gesture or visual statement rather than in a conventional proscenium where you often think about making multiple different images. You put the scenery on, then you close a curtain, you open it and there's a new scene or the scenery comes on and then you push it off and you push new scenery on. When you're building in a non-traditional space, it's more like doing architecture or home decoration where you don't think of your living room as, oh, I'm going to decorate my living room for when I wake up in the morning. Then I'm going to change my living room for when I watch TV at night. Then I'm going to change it again for the next day. Instead, what you do is you think, I want to make a space that I could live in for multiple days. So in theater design, when you're in a non-traditional space, I think it's often best to just think of it as I'm making a room or an environment. The two bits of practical advice I would have is, um, sometimes a smart way to think about it is not like designing a play at all. Instead, think about it like you might design a haunted house, for instance. Some of the tricks that you might use there, of how an audience might move or how space might become small or be, might become big, or how um, a terrifying uh, character played by an actor, a monster or something could interact with a live audience member. That's a fun way to think about it. The other bit of advice that I would have is just get up and try it. So um, whether you've got a high school cafeteria that you can take over for a school production or a black box theater at a university or a small theater space that you're working with professional actors in or even a non-traditional theater space like an outdoor space that you find in a park or an abandoned storefront that you um, rent for a couple weeks. Get a space and then literally just start um, moving in. Set chairs somewhere, decorate the space, invite actors and directors in and start exploring how would those artists, the actors and directors, experience the space and how would an audience experience the actors in the space. From there, you can start moving things around in the room, painting walls, changing objects. It's, um, it's a different way than, than thinking of it all in advance and painting a picture of it and then asking people to build it onto a stage like you might in a normal design, but it can be incredibly fun. Um, because of the immersion of it all. Do you have any tips for young designers who may be working in a venue such as this where you can change configurations uh, in different ways? Most importantly, the thing that I would want for anyone who is involved in theater or any creative endeavor, whether you're a designer or an actor or whether for that matter you're a musician or a, a painter or a dancer, what I hope most for folks is that they have a sense of bravery a sense of freedom, a desire to make something no one has ever seen before, and a fearlessness that um, risk everything, risk making something bad, risk making something crazy, risk making something bold. That sense of risk and fearlessness and joy comes through to an audience, and it's much, much better than doing a production that looks just like every other version of that play ever. Uh, audiences don't want to show up at the theater and see the exact same thing they've seen before. They want to experience something new and fresh, something as if for the very first time. So what I would wish for you is that joy and bravery of creativity. Kevin, thanks for joining us here at Pack at Home. Um, it was great hearing how DTC has taken advantage of a venue such as the Wiley and its capability. Thank you, Weston, so much for letting me be a part of this conversation. Uh, I've had fun thinking about all the creative ways that theater space can be used, and I'm looking forward to seeing what a whole new generation of theater artists are able to create at the Wiley Theater for decades to come and in theater spaces all across the country. That's it for today's segment of Backstage Spotlight's Tech Talks. Thank you to all the foundations and donors who make programs such as these possible. We couldn't do it without you. If you'd like to see more programs like this, please visit atpac.org slash support. I'm Weston Kuyper with the AT&T Performing Arts Center, yours to discover. Thanks.